Today we are joined by someone that is fighting this coming Saturday, Chris the Wolf Thompson, bro. You've been on before, but it's a real pleasure to have you on. Thank you for having me back. Uh, it's always a pleasure being and chatting with you. Yeah, man, showtime. Not next week, Saturday, next week, Friday. Next week, Friday, sorry. This Friday, I this guess. This coming this Friday, coming yeah. This coming Friday, yeah. Showtime. Jean Roux. Jean who? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm joking, I'm joking, I'm joking. But you're feeling confident, obviously. Yeah, look, um, you know, as you get longer in the tooth in your boxing career, so you build confidence through understanding, if that makes sense, through experience, through going through the same experiences around the world in the same process here in South Africa. You gain confidence, you, you gain understanding of exactly what you're going into, you know. I think there's a lot of fear in the unknown. And to be honest with you, me getting into a boxing ring is certainly not unknown to me and myself, my thought process, my life. Mm. So I, I think that's where it comes from. You are the more experienced boxer as well. He's been by a, far. Yeah. By okay. Far, by so far. what's his fighting history? I see like three, think, three years ago he turned pro. Or something. Yeah. To be honest with you, I think he. I, I, I'll be lying to you if I give you the exact, but I think he's had between six and nine fights. Pro fights. Yeah. Okay. And you, how many pro no, fights? This is number twenty. Twenty. So. And he's also never fought outside of the country, never fought on big stages with big lights. Mm. Uh, you know, there is just difference in experience. Yeah. I was actually going to say, one of the questions I want to ask, and you brought it up now, is, you know, you've been in the game for a while. You experience, you know how to deal with certain emotions. You know how to do all of that. And obviously, you've been working with Shannon for a very long time. How has your guys' approach, obviously, as you develop as a fighter, as Shannon develops as a coach, things change a bit. Yeah. But, you know, how different, even this camp from previous camps, have things changed? You know, how have you as a fighter even changed throughout your career? Uh, to be honest with you, the camps haven't changed too much. Um, I would say since I've been with uh, Shannon and Nard Lopes, my strength and conditioning coach, my the setup of the the camp hasn't changed much. The The way that we train also hasn't, we adapt, obviously, we, we do new things. But um, I would say the biggest the biggest change is probably just the, the years of understanding of each other, you know. Like me and Shannon being together for quite some time. And uh, me and Nart also been together for quite some time. So like just that link up get smoother not much changes to be honest with you i haven't i haven't really changed much at all and your mental and the mental aspect of you know compartmentalizing the fight versus because i know personally like when i did my white collar obviously it was you know so so minor compared but to it's the same thing bro it's the same thing the men, the same how thing. you need to prepare yeah, yourself thing. sure but it was difficult for me to you know not you know, because you need to be aggressive, you need to be a killer when you're on that in that ring. But I had to become the killer a few days leading up to the ring, yeah. and I had to be cold, and I had to be hard, and it's I a had weird to. Thing, yeah? So how do you are you able to now with more experience, you know, kind of separate? Uh, to be them? honest, no, not really. I think uh, I understand exactly what you're saying. Like uh, I actually said to Shan the other day, this is my worst period because uh you like exactly like what you say you do have to almost be, yeah or not you, uh, almost you do you, you become cold you become ready for a fight you know the the mental side of thing changes you laugh a little bit less like things get serious you know uh, you, you're about to put your life on the line and uh, i mean that all the way from white collar to amateur all the way up to pro you, you know you're about to put your life on the line you can die in any one of those situations and you can you can disrupt your health in any one of those situations. And and it was actually something that I saw Kevin Arena say the other day that actually resided in me big time. And I liked how he said it. He said, you know, a lot of people, if I tell some random person, hey, bro, you got to pitch up to this park and you got to fight this guy on Friday. Do you think that guy's going to pitch up? No, probably not, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, these fight, all fighters, anyone who's willing to get in the ring, you, you're a little bit mentally unstable. And so to prepare for that, you've got to create like an unstable environment. Mm. What what outlet do you think you get from fighting, you know, in terms for of... For me personally? Yeah. Joy. Yeah, purpose, joy. 
And obviously the training, the regime, the standard, the structure. I would say the same, eh? purpose and joy. Okay, so you v someone else, you know, you fighting someone else, you get joy. Obviously not, if you had to kill someone in the ring, different story after the fact, you know, you not, might not have joy, but during and the fighting and do you find joy in putting yourself in such difficult positions? 100%, 100%. What, what do you think, what growing up do you think led to you becoming a boxer and, you know, finding joy in physical altercation? Because a lot of, I mean, the vast majority of humans don't. Um, you know, to be honest with you, I think since I, I it's not always been com combat, but I've always, one, been very boisterous and like, uh, like uh, wrestled with friends and done like just naughty boy things, throwing rocks through windows. You know, I was like a naughty kid. But um, it's always been sport. Like my life has all like literally has always been geared towards playing sport. And mm. uh, to be honest, I like being challenged more than anything. You know, I think uh, not just me. I think all humans like being challenged. And uh, boxing brings that new challenge every time. Every opponent, every, everything's new. Mm. I think also it's seeking a thrill, you know. It's the same as yeah, yeah, a yeah, professional yes, motocross yes. athlete. It's yes. thrill. You, you, you're you putting your life on the line. There's thrill in that. There's adrenaline. 100%. It's exciting. You know, people, like a thrill seeker, even though it's not the same as jumping off a mountain, but it's you, as much thrill. You know, it's actually so funny. I was thinking about actually on my, my drive here. Yeah. I was thinking, you know, boxing is a weird, uh, it's a weird sport. And uh, on the and I was thinking about it to such an extent that on the night that I fought Keaton, he's defending the SA title that he took from me, and uh, that was a tough fight, you know. But uh, I would regard Keaton as a not as a close friend, but as he's a friend, you know, somebody that I like good guy, like genuinely a good guy. But if we have to fight each other again, we would, you know what I'm saying? And the same thing, bro. To be very honest, the same thing with John, who's a nice guy. But we're going to fight and it's going to get violent. Mm. And uh, this is going to sound very crazy, but to be honest with you, uh, you will understand this. There is nothing more satisfying than hurting another man on completely even playing grounds. Like I'm allowed to hurt you. Mm. I can hurt you. I can do whatever I want. Yeah. Within the rules of boxing. And he's allowed to it. do the same to you. So it's completely it's fair, fair. It's fair. It's fair. Yeah. We, signed, we signed a contract to do that to each other. How was that, you know, obviously it was an incredible fight with you and Keaton. You know, that was really, really entertaining. And you say, obviously, now you are better friends. You say you're better friends after the fight. Definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And that's also what's special and about boxing. We, had, you know? we were teammates before. And I would, say, I would definitely say after I fought him, I would say, hey, maybe you gain more respect for the person. Vice versa, I would believe. Mm. And uh, I don't know, it's just... You have a connection, if that makes sense. Well, it's you're doing such a primal thing, and you know we spot, you connect. Like after he beat me, I can't remember. Uh, yeah, I went to go fight the English heavyweight champion Solomon Dakers, and he helped me with sparring, bro. Crazy. I think that's also <laughs> the fight before I fought him. Yeah, and I think that's also what's interesting is you need to have this ego in boxing. You have to have an ego. You have to be confident, but you also have to not have such an ego that now you're not going to go fight or spar with Keaton who yeah. maybe just beat you because like, nah, screw that guy. But you need to be like, okay, well, yes, I lost to him, but I can't allow my ego to not now go spar with Keaton to improve and become better. Yeah, iron sharpens iron for sure. Yeah. For sure. So, you know, that fight with Keaton, obviously, unfortunately, you lost that title. How was that dealing with that? How long did you have the you time? Know, I actually had before? a chat with Keaton uh, in, in those sparring sessions and I told him, like, uh, that one hurt. To be honest, like, uh, I don't have to play games. Uh, losing to Keaton hurt. It, it was not enjoyable. I think anyone losing at the top ground, you know, when you're the, when you're the champion and then you lose that, it hurts. Mm. And, uh, you know, aspiring when you when you start your career as a fighter, you you want, you want you plan to be the champion. Yeah. Not only the champion of your country, but the champion of your continent, you know? And then you lose that. It, you know, it, it, you question a lot. 
Mm. It hurts. Uh, what What are you questioning? Bro, you question pretty much everything, you know. I think every every, every fighter goes through a loss, questions things. To be honest with you, the only thing uh, I didn't question was my team. I I know I'm with the, I know I'm with the right team, and I know if something goes wrong, it's on me. Mm. So you know, you start, maybe you question yourself. You question, is this the career for me? Is it all of these things? How did you then, you know, recover from that? Like uh, like I said, uh, joy and purpose. They're not there when you're not like when I'm not training. You know, I won't go as far as to say there's no joy or there's no purpose because obviously there is life. I have a whole life outside of boxing. You know, boxing is not my life. It's just some of what I do mm. to make a living. To be honest with you, but uh, it is a large it it is a large benefactor to my joy and my purpose. Mm, of you course, know? you know I find a lot of joy and I find a lot of purpose in the sport of boxing. So what got you back on track, you know, after the loss? Was it kind of just you got over Fuck yourself? Fuck that, man. Yeah, you know, life's about taking losses. Yeah. Life's about taking losses and, and just moving forward. Um, yeah, I'm no, I'm no quitter. Did you just call yourself out on your rubbish, you know? Or- yeah, bro, 100%, you know. Just decided, no, nah, fuck that, like, uh, let's keep going. Actually, after I fought Keaton, I went and fought the uh, Olympic, uh, not the Olympic, the Russian champion in his hometown. To be honest with you, I think I beat him. Uh, the, obviously, fighting in Russia, the judges had a different deal. Um, and I just challenged myself. I said, fuck that. Let's uh, let's go fight these top, like, whatever presents itself that's a threat. Let's take that opportunity. Mm. How was it being in Russia fighting, you know, with the complete, Their champion. Yeah. <sighs> a shock, to be honest. I mean, uh, he knocked out Deontay Wilder in the amateurs. Sure. And he was 16 and 0, 16, or something in 0, either 14 and 0, 14 knockouts or 16 and 0, 14 and 16 knockouts. Yeah. And uh, then I thought, geez, how am I going to go against this guy who's banging everybody? And he's, it's going to be for real in his hometown in a massive stadium. How recently was, how, or well, the the duration between Keaton's fight and that fight? Three months. Okay. Three, four months. Yeah. Had you. At what stage did you kind of got over yourself and your self pity after Keaton's fight before you know signing that a month. fight? It took me a month. Okay. Honest, it took me a month. Was some of that also like? Because I know personally, if I do, if I have negative thoughts, if I become lazier or if I become you know anything that is against to the person I want to be, like let's say if, if a good example is while I'm running, if I think about the hill I have to run up, then I'm like, yo, no, I don't want to do that. I'm like. Did I just say I don't want to do that? Then I force myself to do it and I torture myself more. Yeah. Is that maybe also something that you did where it's like, why well, have I been wallowing my self-pity? And then you kind of torture yourself like, well, you will fight this guy as like payback to yourself. I think in yourself. a way, like, uh, you know, I think you think about more like why you're actually doing this, you know. And uh, to be honest with you, the reason why I'm doing boxing is because I love it so much. And I, to be honest, I genuinely want to fight the best guys that are given to me. So, like, my last fight, I fought the 2020 Olympic gold medalist, uh, Uzbekistan champion in his hometown, and uh, it didn't go my way. But the reason why I was actually so excited for that fight is because it was such a big challenge, you know. And uh, those are kind of things that I think, uh, you know, you look forward to and you look forward to almost proving wrong. And if it doesn't, like, you know, this it's not what if, you know, and... Uh, like uh, boxing brings out many things in me, and I think it was the, I think it was more the fact that I didn't like the person of like uh, almost being cowardly mm. away from or, or hiding from losing. Losing is important, man. Like uh, everyone is lost. So Trust then, me. with certain fighters and certain people's boxing careers who maybe. And I don't want to use the word strategic, but for lack of a better word, are strategic and choose the fights that they can't lose, or they at least have a better probability, a better probability that you're going to win. Just to like try and navigate your career so you have no losses. You know, how would you talk to that compared to taking every good challenge that comes your way? Well, everyone's got to do what they got to do. I'm not the same as anyone. Mm. 
So what, what I want to do and how I want to do it is not the same as literally anyone else. Because so you, you want to challenge yourself. Yeah, like, uh, and fairly so. Somebody could look at my career and say, challenge yourself, how? You know, or, you know, their version of challenge is something else, you know, or they wouldn't have taken certain fights at certain times. But that's okay. Like, uh, I'm just doing what I'm doing. That's all I can control. That's all I can do. And that's all I want to do. Because mm. I just want to do what I, what I do. Let me do what I do. You know, fighting in these foreign countries, and you mentioned obviously having a strong team with you, but how difficult is it, you know, fighting locally versus fighting in something like, you know, Russia? No, with- much easier to fight local. Yeah. Nice to fight locally. Like, are you joking? Empress Palace is 20 minutes from my house. Yeah. I don't have to fly, firstly. I don't have to travel. Traveling is it's hard on the body. I don't have to um, learn a different language. You don't have to you have a stadium of 40,000 people against you, mm. quiet. Like, it's nice to, but it, what a, to be honest with you, what a blessing to go to those kind of hostile environments, experience that while you're, while I'm a pro, you know. Does that help also sometimes with the hostility of the environment to the mindset of, you know, I'm going to get you? I love it, man. I love it. Uh, I don't know why. I, lo- I like that uh, odds the against underdog. me. I just like having the odds stacked against me, you know. Um, it's it's a feeling, it's a familiar feeling. I feel like I'm in the right place if the odds are stacked against me. Mm. I feel like I'm doing something wrong if the odds are all, all for me. Yeah, yeah. In favor of me. You mentioned, obviously, having a loss helps you improve and it helps you become a better fighter. But how have those losses impacted you maybe mentally and emotionally? You know, like, has it, obviously it builds resilience. It helps you. It makes you more confident. You know, how do those losses, as opposed to just always winning? I don't know. I haven't always won. <laughs> but, you, but you would choose the route of losses because you know you've been testing yourself whereas if you got a, a career, unbeaten career to be honest with you if i'm being dead deadly honest i think it would be better to be at the stage where i am now 20 and 0 undefeated it aligns you for bigger like big big paydays you know um but unfortunately like i said that is not how things have panned out you know obviously uh it would have been great to have knocked to be honest with you if i was 20 and 0 and 20 knockouts would it be better for me yeah most definitely mm. okay but me. career aside you as a person the other losses would have developed me more yeah. or you know like I said who knows you know maybe uh, you undefeated and then you you know you face a big adversity loss in a world title like every everyone's walk is different you know am I grateful for my losses in a way yes uh, am I irritated by my Losses, yeah, yeah, definitely. You know, uh, am I discouraged by my losses for a point in time? Yes. Will I let it uh, set me off? Nah, fuck that, man. Mm. Who cares? Because you are where you are today. Everything in your life has happened the way it has happened. You know, if you had constant wins, you might not have your dog. You might not. Something would be different, right? Like everything could be different. You know, everything in life can only happen one way yeah. at the end of the day it's the way that it happens you know and uh luckily i've uh to be honest with you i've had a large say on my own career uh luckily i haven't had uh people telling me this is what you will do and this is what like uh i've had a hand on my own career and i've chosen where i've wanted who would be the main person would it be promoters that you sign with or who would like if in a boxer's I'm not career signed to a promoter right so would i would that say the be most the, person? In, the, the most influential people in your career would be on in the business aspect yeah, of yeah. it, it would be your manager and your promoter. Those would be the most influential people. And they very often kind of guide your career and uh, choose your path. Mm. You know, where I've been pretty different. I've, I've chosen what I've wanted to do. Why did you choose that route of, you know, self? Uh, to be honest with you, it just made business sense, right? Uh, yes, uh, sport is a business, but often what happens to a lot of sportsmen is um, they allow somebody else to control their money, their career, where they go, where they stay, who they play for, who they, you know. They allow other people to make those kind of decisions and and they kind of just sit back and do the hard work. Uh, Whereas, like, just from a business 
point of view for me that doesn't make, it doesn't make sense you know if I'm going to be putting in the work let me make the decisions it's my career at the end of the day I'm the one getting yes we all have our uh, points yeah and and we we all have our parts in the team but at the end of the day I'm I'm the fighter mm. I'm, I'm the business but I'm sure you and Shannon also he also kind of works a little bit as your um, you know your promoter manager along with you like Bro, to be deadly honest he doesn't hey? okay uh, and that's what I love about uh, Shannon. Look, uh, Shannon and I have a very good understanding. Like, I'll be honest with you, if I get a, I promise if I get a contract to fight Tyson Fury uh, in June, I'll take it. 100% I'll take it. And Shannon will let me take it because I want to take it. So he'll, he supports me in that and he will do his best to train me to prepare to fight that guy. Would another manager take that fight? He goes, no ways. He'll tune you, bro. This is not a good fight for you. You're going to lose this fight. But, bro, if I want to do it, let me do it. Mm. And so I'm saying. So, like, Shannon plays a very big role in the trainer and he's a great trainer and stuff like that. But we have a very good understanding with each other. If I want to fight somebody, he's going to let me. Bro, and he's great like that. Like if but I want, he will also maybe bring you opportunities for a fight if he hears about of something. Of course, yeah, of yeah. course, of course, of course. And if it's a good decision for both of us, we'll take it. But uh, like uh, no one is holding anyone back, mm. which is what I love. Like he's not trying to tell me, no, you can't do this, you can't do that. Like if we get an opportunity, we take it. Mm. You mentioned having a life outside boxing and how important, well, everyone knows the importance, but few implement it. Yeah. How important is, you know, the business, having businesses or having some sort of income outside of the boxing because you can get injured tomorrow and never be able to fight again. Look, for me, uh, paramount, you know, uh, to be honest with you, just as important. Uh, for me specifically, I'm an entrepreneur. I, mm. I like business. I like all kinds of business. Um, and, and it's been that way for quite some time. Uh, bro, I'm not even being funny. You know when my first encounter of business came about is when uh, I was in primary school, we used to have those like uh, like stall sales. Mm -hmm. I can't remember what they called it. It was, in like, primary school, yeah, it, was it was like, like every Wednesday they make these stores and you can go and buy stuff. Yeah. And I think that was my first taste of business that I can remember myself and recall. And I remember excelling in it. And so, um, you know, I, I really believe there's a huge importance of having a life outside of boxing because there's a lot that happens on outside of boxing and people only see you for the light of boxing but there's a there's a whole life and there's a whole bunch of other things that i love other than just boxing you know mm. and uh yes is boxing a big part of it, and a big thing that i love yes it, really, it genuinely it really is but are there other things that are as important to me like my businesses like doing other things yes there is how does it help because you know if you had to constantly because obviously you train you spar you you know, strategically plan about all of these fights and all of that. So a large portion of your day is allocated thought process and physically towards boxing. Yeah. But it is more effective to have something apart from that to be able to kind of reset a little bit, to be able to maybe the next day go back and be 100% in the boxing framework. Yeah, look, obviously uh, sometimes they collide. And uh as I've done it for longer, you, like you learn how to manage the two together, right? You get better at managing the two. And as you add another business, you got to learn how to manage another business along mm. with that and the time and, and things like that. But I have a rule. Uh, when I'm in the gym, nothing else matters. Like uh, the only person's phone call I'll answer is my wife's. Mm. If anyone else phones me, I put down. I don't read text messages. I don't read. I don't care what goes on in the Call it hour and a half to two hours that I'm in the gym. I don't care what's going on. It was the business. I don't care what's going on. Obviously, if there's an emergency, I'm always available. Yeah. And uh, there are only, I would genuinely, other, there are only, I would say right now, maybe two, three people on. If you phone me while I'm training, I'll take your call and find out what the situation is. Like my wife even knows not to phone me when I'm training. So she doesn't phone me. So yeah. I know if she phones me, emergency. it's an emergency. Um. But as soon as I, I'm not even being funny, as soon as I'm finished with the, the session, you know, like there's... A million I have, things that you have yeah, to do. Yeah, I have three businesses to run, you know. I have four employees to look after. I have, you can imagine how many pr problems that brings mm -hmm. up as well. And uh, it's, it's enjoyable to balance the two. What parallels 
as boxing and business, you know, you've been able to use, you know, certain mindsets or certain attributes or whatever together, like maybe from boxing to business? Hard work, I think. Yeah. Last, uh, first in, last out. Yeah. I think that kind of a mentality has helped me largely in both worlds. Yeah, I think anything with business can be, you can learn and take from your physical activities, whatever the physical activity is, is the resilience, the hard work, and seeing yeah. that that hard work always pays off. Yeah, you know, funnily enough, now that I'm thinking about it, I had a conversation with somebody yesterday and they said that they wanted to open an e-commerce business that doesn't allocate too much of their time and make revenue from it. So I, <laughs> I just kind of chuckled and I said to him, hey, bro, like, you know, there's no business that you're going to start that is not going to require your time. Yeah. Or if you want it not to require your time, it's going to require a lot of your money, right? Yeah. You're going to have to outsource a million people, yeah. Yeah. If I don't want something to absorb a lot of my time, I'm going to have to employ a lot of people so it doesn't absorb my time. Yeah. So it absorbs their time. Like um, you just got to manage to do both, you know. And as I've got older, I actually um, did this my massage therapist the other day. As I've got older, I found that I have the capability of going like longer and I've become more resilient and I'm, I'm able to do more. You know, I used to come home from a boxing, a two and a half hour boxing session, I promise you and be dead and be like finished. Now I'm able to do that and go into a meeting and go back to training and switch between the two. It's, uh, I enjoy it. If you weren't a boxer, you know, if you didn't have, if you weren't exposed to it or whatever, mm. what do you think you'd be doing? Another sport, something else, yeah, another sport for sure. Um, obviously, you've known me for quite some time. Mm. When I was in school, I was a very serious swimmer, obviously swam for South Africa. Then uh, left school, played rugby professionally, broke my knee. Then started boxing. You know, if it wasn't for boxing, it would have been another sport. Whatever, bro, I'm not even being, I would have, it is who I am. Mm. Being active and being in a competitive environment is, it's part of my makeup as a person. You know, I like being in a physically competitive environment, whatever that is. Yeah, I think it's interesting how, you know, genetics and mindset and upbringing and everything plays a role in making you who you are, you know, and it might not have been boxing, but it would have been something where you are physically tested every day because, yeah. you know, people like to be physically tested, but not at a professional level or the highest level. Yeah. So it's definitely something, obviously genetically, you were given good genetics and then also built resilience through growing up and a good mindset. And then also you love it. Bro, I, I promise you, I think that the, the main factor is there is that I enjoy it. You know, since I was a kid, if you had said to me, would I rather kick a soccer ball or be in a classroom, I'll kick the soccer ball. If I would, I'd rather throw a tennis ball or be in the classroom, I'll be in the, the, on the field. Yeah. You know, pretty much, I, I, pretty, I'm almost sure if you ask me if I would, I'd, let me see something completely out of my reach. Gymnastics, would I rather be doing gymnastics or being in the class? I would have chose to be in the gymnastics mm -hmm. class. You know, I've, I've just always been that way. It's uh, it's just been who I am. So if it wasn't for boxing, it would probably be the same two fields, business and another sport. Mm. I see you've been riding a lot now. I I have. I'm actually doing the roof this year. Oh, really? Yeah, bro. So a very good friend of mine um, got me into the riding. I actually f first bought quad bikes, ATVs, and he said to me, no, nah, man, these ATVs. It's not the way. Get an MX bike. So then I was like, okay, what do you want to do? And then he said to me, no, get an enduro bike. You fit, so get an enduro bike. You're comfortable. And uh, got an enduro bike. And I'm, I've been telling everyone who does enduro that I'm going to do the roof. And nobody believes me. I'm going to do it. Yeah. Awesome. That's a, I mean, it's an incredible event to do. So obviously you say you fit, so you're like enduro. But it is also a slightly different type of fitness. So how was it, you know, doing those first first Hectic. few rides? Hectic, bro. It, 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 it's an intense sport, bro. Yeah. I think uh, very similar to boxing, you know, I think what ties you out is that mental concentration. You you know, you're on a bike riding through stuff and you gotta, you got to be mentally sharp or you're going to fall and you're going to hurt yourself. Mm. And you're aware of that. So I think it mentally it's super draining. How is riding with, you know, like let's say a fight coming up, you know, how careful now do you have to be? Bro, I haven't been. So 
I rode last about a month ago. Uh, and I didn't even ride my – no, I'm lying. I did ride my two-wheeler. And I wasn't supposed to, if I'm being honest with you. I was supposed to go ride my uh, ATV uh, just because they're a bit safer and the way that you ride them and where that you ride them is a little bit safer. But I haven't ridden in about yeah, about a month, maybe five weeks. Um, is that like a personal decision? Was it like a contractual decision? N- no, per- bro. I'm not being funny with you. If I wanted to ride this weekend, my team would have allowed me. Like I said to you, uh, I'm the one who makes the kind of those kind of decisions, and uh, it's just a, uh, it's just irresponsible of me to expect my team to put in so much time with me, and then on the weekends I'm gonna go ride my bike because I enjoy it, mm. and uh, it's very risky. So it was a personal decision, and it was it is the right decision, you know, like. Uh, I've got a fight coming up. Yeah. I've got to focus on that. There are people who depend on me. There are sponsors who depend on me. There's the people that support me. And I respect those people enough to respect what I'm doing. Yeah. So now, obviously, this fight is coming Friday. When When is the roof? If you, if in you, November. In November. Okay. So, then- so actually, after our fight, I would uh, like to go ride on t- – I would like to go ride this week, Sunday. Mm. Um, but on the 27th of Well, eight, if it ends in the first round, you definitely will be able to But even if it ends in the 8th, I believe I'll be able to. So, um, and then at the end of April, I'm going to go do a race in Dahlstrom. And nice. then, you know, I'll do a couple of races this year to build up to roof and then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give it my best shot. So let's say, obviously, after this weekend, will you maybe, do you have another fight lined up? The no, not at the moment, nothing concrete. So, okay. This but week, I will uh, little uh, insert is I will I will fight in South Africa mm. again this uh, year. Yes, this year okay. I will fight in South Africa again this year. My so, next fight will be in South Africa. It'll just have to maybe be before or after or before roof because I was assuming yes, if before. you had to do roof, you're gonna need like maybe three months of less boxing to be able to prepare maybe a bit more or not? Do you think you could you, – you'll still do the boxing training, but maybe you wouldn't be doing a camp for a fight? Can I be honest? I, yeah. don't, I don't know. Uh, I, I don't know. You'll try to do both and see how you can manage. Yeah, bro. Uh, I'll try Obviously, and ride my bike. Obviously, not seat. having a fight though. In, in yes, not yeah. having a fight. Yeah. I, I, would, I would still box and I would try and ride like three times a week, three, four times a week. Mm. Um. But I don't know. Is the honest truth. Uh, I'm gonna. I'm gonna manage to do both. Yeah. But so you got that mindset of whatever you do, trying to push and be the best. Yeah, bro. Just push myself to as far as I can possibly go. And you know, uh, oh, like that's what I enjoy about, uh, I guess, life is mm. seeing how far we can go, seeing what I can do, trying funny things, starting up boxing and having a first pro fight six months in. Starting to ride uh, MX Enduro and ride the hardest roof, uh, hard, the hardest ride in the country the same year. I don't know. Things like that, enjoy, I enjoy them. How does your wife feel about you being someone? She smokes, <laughs> man. She smokes. I, I'm sure I've seen her photos yeah, of riding as well. Yeah, she comes with me. Yeah, she she, she, with does she ride? Uh, yeah, bro, she does. You know, like, uh, we, you got to do things together. Mm. We enjoy doing shit together. So. so how has your relationship changed? Has it changed much, like, from... Pre pre marriage, no, not a bit. Not, not nothing. Nothing has changed, other uh, than the papers. Yeah, uh, I don't even know where those are. She will know it, <laughs> but <laughs> bro, genuinely, nothing has changed. And uh, I'm not saying that's right or wrong. That's just. But I mean, if you're living nice. together and you have a life together before you married, and then you get married, like what could change? Like you're still gonna have a life together. A it's lot, a lot can change. Life changes. The only thing yeah, constant the, the is the dynamic, changed, yeah? the relationship. Like you're still gonna be if unless someone gets a job somewhere else, you're gonna be living under the same roof. Yeah, you're still gonna be loving each other and caring. Obviously, I mean relationships end and that kind of stuff. But you know, if you are a happy, loving couple that both live in the same house before marriage and after marriage, it's not really gonna change. Other than like if you make the relationship work and keep working on it. Yeah, bro. I don't think anything needs to change, right? I mean, that is why you choose to get married. You're like, okay, this is kind of sweet. I can do, I can do with this. Yeah, yeah. Like without being funny, you know. Yeah. Like I, I think that's the decision you make. Like I like this environment. I don't want this environment to change, and therefore, 
I would choose to put myself in this environment. Mm. And kids? Have you had that discussion with her yet? Bro, kids are on the card, 100%. Okay. What kids do you want? You personally, like two boys, one girl, girls, what do, what do you want? I think the answer is pretty obvious, right? You want a boy. But whatever. I mean, whatever you can't life, control it. Yeah, so. And I mean that without any kind of like connotation to it. Whatever life brings mm. is a blessing, you know. And uh, you would have to do your best to provide whatever that is the best opportunities. Would I prefer a boy? Yes, I would. Mm. I think yeah. a lot of men would say yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's just, as a man, it's difficult to know how to raise a girl. Or it's difficult, like if they're going through something as a youngster, like, how, okay, how do I manage this with her? How do I help her? How do I do all these things? Whereas with a boy, yeah. you can be a little bit harder, I think, as well. Yeah, also, like, I think uh, it's about what you can uh, pass on, you know. There's a lot more, obviously, being a, a man, there's a lot more knowledge I could pass on to a son than mm. I feel I could pass on to a daughter. But then again, you've never, you've never had it, you know. You've never done it. Um, I think for me, I would just maybe if I, at my current thought process would be I want a, a boy first at least because I know how men are towards women. Like yeah, I know yeah, how yeah. disgusting a yes. man can I be to, you. and like if I know that man is thinking about my daughter that way, that's tough. Yeah. Yeah. Look, also, I think I would, uh, a very good friend of mine has got a little son. He's like one and a half. Uh, and uh, bro to be very honest with you when I see that little Lati I don't know if you guys have seen that little Project Mbappe story you know like where you get a little kid and then you want to like just impart your knowledge about sport into yeah. the kid yeah like you, you can feel that you know mm. like when you see a little boy like teach it anything how to kick a ball how to hit a golf ball how to play tennis how to catch with both hands how to kick with both feet Things like that, uh, like resonating you. Mm. It is cool because we are in the time of our life now where we aren't the people. Obviously, we're still going to get information. We're still going to learn from other people. But now it's also coming to the point in our lives where we imparting knowledge on other people. So it's a cool transition to be going through where it's, okay, well, now it's my chance to maybe help someone the way someone else helped me. Yeah, look, I hope uh, that never ends, you mm. know. Uh, I, the, I, I don't believe in anything called a one man army. You know, uh, there isn't. I, I genuinely, I don't see it. I, I've, ne I have never seen it. There is no such thing. In, in, I believe, and so I hope I'll never stop learning. I hope I'll never stop teaching, wherever it may be. You know, uh, we are wherever it may be, wherever we may make an impact or be impacted. I think that is. Uh, what life's about mm. now obviously what's today sunday so you got like five days before the fight what what, what do you do this week bro to be honest with you so a lot of people think like you, you you turn off but it's actually quite the opposite you know like now things get super intense in terms of training wise obviously the load is a lot less but the sessions are a lot more intense you know gearing up to that fight pace that fight mode um and to be honest with you trying to avoid uh, problems, public spaces, and like uh, just chilling as much as possible, to be honest with you. Like uh, either I'm at the gym or I'm at home this week um, and just trying to get to, uh, into that, you know, into that frame of mind that whatever happens, like this is what we're going through, you know. Mm. Um, often uh, I, I just think of it like preparing to go into like a big wildfire, when you're in that wildfire, you're in the wildfire. It's time to fight, you know. Um, and, you know, that's what we prepare for. So just preparing for yourself, preparing yourself mentally for that, knowing that, you know, whatever happens in there, that's what we're there for. Mm. Like uh, a lot of it is that. And, and that's what I enjoy. I'll, I enjoy the turn up of fight week. I, I, really, I really enjoy it. What other than the fight itself is your favorite part of, you know, this this build up or is it like the weigh-ins? Is it facing your opponent the day before or like for you? What's No, for me all of that's bullshit, bro. Like uh It's the pageantry of it. Yes, it's for the people watching at yeah, home. Yeah. 
Um, bro, I, I would. <laughs> you you really want to know what my favorite part of the whole event is? Mm. I actually, I I think there are only two people that know this. Uh, would be Shannon and my wife. My whole my favorite part of the whole event is the shower afterwards. Showering their blood off you. If there's blood, there's blood, you know. If there's no blood, there's no blood. Uh, their blood, not yours. Their even blood. if it is my blood, you <laughs> yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. Like, uh, bro, I, I don't know what it is, but that feeling is like, uh, there's nothing like it. It's that post-war, bro, it's post-battle. The, there's such a feeling when you like, you know you've just done something. You've just fought another man. And Expl- be- explain, you know, that feeling maybe because maybe to put in perspective for people that haven't fought, you know, the, to the best of your ability, obviously it's quite difficult to explain. <laughs> how do you, uh, you know, how do you explain that? Um, it's almost like a God uh, figure. You get like this tempo about you where you, like if I've beat you up, bro, in a fair, we we fair. I'm better than you, you know, mm-hmm. in that aspect and I'm on that night, I'm better than you. You know that, and I don't know. It's just a euphoric feeling of like, you just feel great, and you you know. I think well, not I think I know that when you lose, the, the exact opposite is also true. You feel that defeat. Boxing is very ruthless in that way. The win lose. It's all. It's always a championship. Every fight is a championship. Yeah. yeah. So now, obviously, you've experienced victory. You've gone through defeat. What for you now is the driving force? Would it be more to have that feeling of victory or to not have that feeling of regret? You know, is it that? No, that feeling of victory, man. Oh, that's great. So it's so it's your motive, most motivating factor isn't I don't want to be a loser. So it's not that you know I don't want to ever have that feeling again. It's no, I'm the best. Yes, yeah, hundred percent. That is that is what it's about. So what's your prediction for Friday? Bro, I know I'm going to win the fight. Um, I also know I'm going to school him. I know what he's going to He's going to come bring a rough fight. He's a big guy. He's like 130 kilos. He's actually probably the heaviest guy I've ever fought. Um, he's going to come. He's going to try and rough me up. He's going to throw a lot of hooks, a lot of shirt rights. But uh, I'm going to put on a good show. People are going to really enjoy this fight. And... Uh, like I said, I haven't fought you in quite some time and I'm excited to fight back uh, in South Africa and just in front of some home fans and in, some, in front of friends and family and stuff like that. And uh, I'm just really going to put on a show to show, like you said, that uh, I'm still I'm still the guy in this division. I'm still the number one guy in this division. Well, bro, thank you so much for coming on and thank you for taking the time, especially now, you know, going into the the week and you know preparing for the fight and we wish you all the best and it's going to obviously it'll be on super, super sport, sport yeah and then are tickets still available can people tickets still, are still available. well yes. by the time this launches it might probably be, not yeah. yeah this i'm definitely going to post this before the fight because okay. i have to yeah perfect awesome well bro good luck thank you not that much. you need it I and let's it. go to war showtime sweet cheers guys thanks for watching